Oh, and I, hey, what on earth is wrong with the daggum fishing industry? It, it's a lot. What is right with the fishing industry? That is also a lot. We're going to talk about what's been going on in the fishing industry tonight. It's a mess. It'll make you go crazy. We're going to cover a lot of it as much as we can remember to cover. There's too much to remember at times. That's for sure. But there's been some underhanded dealings going on we're going to get into. What I think more importantly, we're going to get into giving away some jigs to some winners from our naming contest from our jig that is finally, finally almost here. And in honor of that, you'll get this a little later in the live stream. It'll all come full circle. We'll tell you a story tonight, folks. Just stay tuned. Let's get some tunes going. Get this party started. Yeah. What y'all know about Kenny Wayne? Huh? Just sounds like a good old boy right there. Cheers, y'all. Let's get it. Do me a favor as you get in here tonight, man. You guys drop the comments. Let us know who we're talking to. Hey, if you enjoyed the live stream, it's been a while since I've been here. I apologize. We'll explain some of that, too. But if you do enjoy the live streams, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe, do all that stuff. Most importantly, the thing you can do to help us the most is share this video, man. Sharing is caring in a modern world. Come on, Kenny Wayne. What y'all know about Kenny Wayne? Comment in the chat there if you guys know about Kenny Wayne. There's only like five of y'all that really know what I mean when I say Kenny Wayne. <laughs> like five people on earth that know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm saying. Come on. Michael Bray's in the house. Kevin Jones, Michael Zinnier, Randy Kennedy. Those are the first comment. Randy Kennedy says he knows about Kenny Wayne. I like it. I like it. Mike Dofie's in the house. They're starting to file in here now, man. It's taking folks a little bit longer to join up than normal, but... Mm -hmm. Come on. That is to be expected considering how long I have been missing. So I guess we can go ahead and knock that out of the way first. Uh, man, I just, dude, life's busy. Life's busy. Spring fishing season for a fishing guide is a lot. It's a lot on its own. Hey, it's a, it's a, you know, most people work a nine to five. We work a five to nine. You know what I mean? Like it's long days, uh, lots involved with it. On top of that, some of y'all know my wife is pregnant. We are like, about to pop a kid out any day. Um, in fact, we are scheduled for induction here coming up really soon. So uh, if she doesn't come before that, we will have a baby, a brand new baby very, very soon um, coming up shortly. So got that going on. Oh yeah, on top of that, I've got my oldest son is 13. He's in his last year of baseball before he'll be in high school next fall. So this is my last sport to ever coach him in. And for y'all that know me personally, I'm all in on that. Like, I'm all in on that, especially this being his last year. I'm even more all in than normal. So, um, yeah, I've, between all the time, and you know, baseball's a time occupying sport, man. The practices are longer, it's a game of repetition, it's baseball occupies a lot more time. So, uh, we've been doing a lot of baseball. Uh, crazy, probably a little too much, but we do a lot of baseball. Uh, we've been doing a lot of fishing with customers, doing guide trips, and of course, making a baby room ready for a baby and getting all that stuff that goes into having a baby and, and having a nine month pregnant wife is all happening all at once. So the social media content has suffered due to all those reasons. Now we are going to announce our winners uh, from the jig naming competition. I've designed a new jig that I'm working with uh, Bass Amigos. I'm actually part of the company at Bass Amigos. I'm one of the owners. So uh, started a new company with a partner. And you guys will get to meet them soon on camera. We're going to try it once we get everything up and running as far as production goes and product availability. Uh, we're going to try and get you guys to be able to meet those dudes by bringing them on camera and introducing them to you. Um, but right now we've got a jig called the Versa Jig. It's a jig head that I designed. I'm super in love with it. I've put it through its paces. I've put it in rocks. I've put it in brush. I've put it in timber. put it in grass. I've swam it. I've drug it. I've hopped it. I've done all the things that you do. Uh, and most importantly, I've hooked fish with it and it hooks them right and it's It's a special special jig that's coming out soon and we've been promising it for a while now It's everything's gotten delayed just overseas production um, Supply chain issues are mm, a Massive headache to deal with so just got a message today that that jig those that first lot of jigs the several thousand that we ordered are set to be completed 
like next Monday or Tuesday. So a week from today, they'll be shipped. That shipping takes some time from overseas, and then we will have them ready to sell once they get here. So it is coming around. We did a naming contest a while back. A little later in the live stream, we're going to announce those winners, and all of those winners are going to get – there's seven colors that we're starting with. They're getting one of every color jig free sent to them for participating and winning our color naming contest for four of our colors. So – uh, we'll talk more about Bass Amigos fishing and what's going, going on with that and all that stuff here in a minute. Right now, I, I want to get into the topic of the day in bass fishing because I've been away for so long on social media. There's so much that happens in this industry this time of year. And first of all, I want to say huge congratulations to one of my favorite anglers on the Elite Series, Justin Hamner, for winning the Bassmaster Classic. I know I'm late for that, but I've met Justin over the years a few times. If you guys watched the content we did when Fork was going on, uh, you saw us interview him. Man, I like Justin a lot, respect him a lot. He's super nice, super genuine dude. Um, couldn't have been a, a nice, couldn't have happened to a better guy. Couldn't have happened to a better guy to win the Bassmaster Classic. So it was really cool to watch Justin bring that victory home up there at Grand Lake in Oklahoma. The rest of the tournament fishing industry is lost its freaking mind. Like, <laughs> not really. That's the funny thing about all this. And I want to say all this before we get into the negative stuff. I want to preface it by saying this. Uh, can I get a delivery to the school for your boy? Yeah, absolutely, Jared. Absolutely. I will bring that up there to the weight room. Jared Carson, football coach up there in Emory. I will, uh, I will bring a box full of jigs straight to the weight room, son, and give them to you. Absolutely. So before I get into the negativity that's going on, and we're just going to discuss it. I'm not going to try to harp on the negative, but there's been some crazy stuff. But in my experience, the majority of people that you meet in the bass fishing industry are very good people. Like... Family, for you know, faith, family, fishing, that's the order of priority of their life. They're just good people. They'll help you out. Um, all that stuff. So somebody asked me, my question is, have you been starting to fish? I got to stay out of the comments for a little while. I'm going to keep you distracted. Have I been starting to fish? I don't know what that means, but yeah, bro, like I fish like every day. <laughs> every day, pretty much Monday through Friday, I'm fishing. Um, and that's the, the kind of thing that makes you the most crazy, like, when you peek behind the curtain and you work in the industry and you get to know all, you know, some, even just a little bit, just some of the behind the scenes stuff that goes on and you see how much just ridiculous drama and pettiness and jealousy and crap and, you know, backstabbing that goes on in the industry, you're like, why is this happening in an industry full of what seem to be really good people that are just wholesome and like love the sport and are happy to be making their living doing it, yet it, it always ends up with all this crap, man. And, and it's a weird dynamic to it because most of the guys are good and trying to do the right things for the right reason. And one thing that I will say, the bigger it gets, the bigger it gets, the harder it is to, to stay, you know, the bigger it gets for you as, in, I, as a person in the industry, the bigger your career gets in the industry, the harder it is to steer clear of all that crap, like so much crap that goes on behind the scenes um, because more and more people are going to come at you with it, the more successful you are, and that is part of it. So, um, all right, first things first. The biggest, like, what that I've seen since the last time we did a live stream has to be James Watson getting in, suspended indefinitely just kicked off of a professional tour. Well, if you're going to get kicked, you know, before, you know, three months ago, you asked me, Philly, if a guy's going to get kicked off of the Elite Series or the Bass Pro Tour, what would he have to do to do that? Stuff weights in fish like the walleye guys. Um, boxing fish. If you know what boxing fish is, that's another way of cheating in a tournament. Um repeated information violations like in a blatant blatant obvious way and very repeated um i mean yeah that's about the only things that i can think of off the top of my head that would get somebody banned indefinitely just obvious cheating to gain an advantage in the competition which is highly against the rules and blatantly against the rules that would be about the only way i would think anybody would get banned forever nope Apparently not. If you saw the thumbnail that says fishing boat docks, <laughs> there has been a history of 
issues between James Watson and Boyd Duckett, who is the head honcho at Bass Pro Tour, but somehow still fishes the tour. Like, you don't see Chase Anderson out there lining up on Sunday morning for the top ten, you know. You don't see Boyd lining up for the top ten either because he never makes it. But uh, it's just a weird – like, Boyd has not been competitively relevant in so long, and he never really was all that consistently relevant competitively even when he was at his best. He was never one of the best anglers in the world, even though he did win a classic on his – home. On his home lake, he won a classic, but he had to qualify for that classic. So he's got some skins on the wall at the top level, but he was never like one of the best. He was never a Denny Brower. He was never a KVD. He was never a Jacob Wheeler. He wasn't any of those things. And, and James Watson has not been those either. I would say that Boyd Duckett and James Watson, as far as if you ask professional anglers who's a better fisherman at their best, they're probably pretty close, pretty comparable to when Boyd was at his best, when James Watson has been at his best. They're pretty similar in what they've done and accomplished in the industry from a, you know, angler's perspective. Even though Boyd's won bigger tournaments, James cashed more checks, like there's some differences. But they're basically the same. Anyway, but there's been history where, like, you know, we all know all the rule changes. In fact, I – swore off the Bass Pro Tour early this year because of all the rule changes and no live coverage, and it's just always crap with the Bass Pro Tour. It's always nonstop crap. So I swore them off. I was like, I'm not watching this anymore. I'm done with them. I'm out. Check. Done. Get me away from here. Now, James Watson, because he's been fined $10,000, just for saying he didn't like the rule changes on a podcast, basically, and saying he thought it was garbage that they were going to all of a sudden just pull the rug out and cut people and take away their professional fishing platform, which a lot of people tend to agree with. But regardless whether they agree with it or not, they fined him $10,000 for that, and people have knowingly cheated in tournaments and not got hit as hard on the Bass Pro Tour. They've caught cheaters on the tournament and not find them nearly as bad. What? Okay. So he just says he didn't like the rule change. He gets fined ten grand. Now he's really mad. He decides to make a hat that says hashtag FBD, fish boat docks. Now, the hat did look exactly like Duckett's logo in colors, and you could take FBD with Boyd Duckett's initials to mean something different than fish boat docks. Everybody knows that's what he really meant. But he has now been kicked off the trail indefinitely. Banned for life, might as well say. They didn't word it like that, but that's the intent of it, and that's how it's going to function from the Bass Pro Tour because he made those hats. Boyd Duckett embodies just about everything that's wrong with the bass fishing industry. He's an elitist. He's made a lot of money in other businesses over the years. He tries to take control of people. He manipulates the narrative. He's full of crap. He's definitely a liar. There's no doubt about that at this point. The dude lies publicly nonstop. He's actually started a podcast where you can go listen to him, and if you know anything about the industry at all, you'll go, well, the, he'll say something in every podcast episode. You'll go, well, that's a lie. <laughs> like, that's just a lie. That's not true. Um, so, yes, Boyd Duckett is horrible. He was caught cheating himself, fishing during off-limits from his dock in Gunnersville, and he got a 10-minute delay to his day was his penalty. <laughs> it's a joke, dude. It's such a joke. Listen, I feel bad for James Watson because he likes the bass fishing industry. He wants to be part of it. Uh, he's had a lot. I don't feel bad for him as far as his life. He's got, had a ton of success. Um, he's going to do just fine. He'll find another home in bass fishing somewhere eventually, I'm sure. Um, but, uh, you know, it's horrible, dude. He spent a lot of entry fee money and spent a lot of his time investing in building uh, his brand and his profile through their platform at Major League Fishing, and then they just pulled that rug out from under him because he disagreed with the wrong guy who's just power tripping. And that is a lot of what happens in the industry is ego, man. The main thing that is wrong with the bass fishing industry is ego. I got a message for everybody that thinks you're somebody because you can catch a bass. 99% of the world thinks that you wear overalls and chew on hay straw, even if you're Jacob Wheeler. You don't matter, dude. Your ability to catch a bass means nothing in the big picture of things. It's like being the world's best ping pong player. Nobody cares. 
Nobody cares. It doesn't make you something important in life because you're good at bass fishing. You're lucky enough to find a way to survive making a living doing something that you enjoy doing that you are passionate about. You might want to just be grateful for that and quit having a freaking ego and think you're somebody because you can catch bats. You're not, bud. You're nothing. <laughs> like, it's, and you could go deep into that conversation. Even the biggest stars in the world, at the end of the day, all that stuff is very irrelevant when it comes to all the financial success, all the professional success, all the accolades in the world are super irrelevant when it comes to the things that actually matter. Right, like in my belief system, those things don't matter. Like if you're the Tom Brady, it's a lot more important for Tom Brady to believe in God, in my opinion, it should be, just my opinion, to believe in God, to be a good father, and to, if he gets married again, be a good husband, and to be a good son to his parents. You know, that stuff is all way more important than any of the Super Bowls Tom Brady ever won let alone a daggum fishing derby. Especially you dudes that want to wrap your boats to go fish the $100 derby on the weekends. Like, bro, calm down. <laughs> like, get your jersey off, man. Ain't nobody, you're just putting stickers on and doing advertising for free, which hurts the industry, by the way. And uh, nobody's paying you to do that. So stop, because you're just, it's just your ego that you're puffing up, man. Calm down. Take a step back. Look at what it really is. Let's relax a little bit. It's the ego, man. And I see it in the guide industry. It's the ego where... Like, when new guys come in, guys are like, well, that guy doesn't, he shouldn't be guiding, he sucks. Are you the, like, in charge of the Texas Guiding Council? Who are you? Like, this is a free and open market, which I love about it. But anybody can try their hand at guiding, and it's not up to me or any other fishing guide to decide if they get to stay or not. It is up to the consumers. Period in the story. Because I can promise you one guy that would not have stayed and would not have made it if there was such a thing as old guys getting to tell you you don't belong here, this guy, I would have never been allowed in because I had no real fishing skins on the wall when I started this. I had an obsession with bass. I could catch them pretty good, I thought, on Lake Fork. And I documented that on camera. And then all of a sudden, I was one of the busiest guys on the lake. That's all that happened. It, it had nothing to do with you know my tournament history because there was none to speak of. Uh, and I just couldn't afford to fish. I had a family. I didn't want to leave home and travel to fish. Um, young kids at that time. And I couldn't really afford to either with my family and work situation. So I just did what I could to get in the industry this way, and it worked out for me. So um, we don't get to – like, there's dudes out there guiding right now that if you were on this couch next to me and asking me my opinion off camera, I would say, yeah, no, I mean, that guy probably – doesn't have the experience that he needs before he started guiding. I think it was probably not a great decision on his part, but it's not up to me. It's not up to him. It's up to the customers to get in his boat, whether or not they will come back. And those guys that are just running, you know, I call it a house of cards where they're just taking multiple, multiple pictures of the same fish. Their buddies are bringing fish to them to take pictures of. They're just telling lies, basically telling fabrications of the truth, stretching the truth to make themselves look good on social media like they're catching more fish than what they really are. Uh, eventually, over time, the customers weed those guys out and they go out of business most of the time. I mean, it's hard for you to, you know, for lack of a better word, just BS your way through an entire career in this industry. It really is hard to do that. You can fake it for a little while, but not forever. So, now... All right, got on a little tangent there about the Boyd Duckett deal. What else is going on? The, the forward-facing sonar thing. So the forward-facing sonar thing, I'm over. Like, I'm just over it. There, it doesn't need to be banned. There's nothing wrong with it. If you think that forward-facing sonar is cheating, you have not tried to use it. If, and you're not paying attention to how these guys are using it. You're not paying attention to how these guys are using it. If you're watching at the top level, they are not just roaming open water, plucking off one fish at a time. They are following seasonal patterns. Yeah, they did that in the first tournament of the year in February when that's what you do. Like, that's what the fish are doing. You know what guys have done for years before four-facing sonar? They've thrown Alabama rigs out in the abyss and caught fish really well doing that on suspended fish. Like, fish have always gone to the middle of the lake and suspended in the winter, 
And there's always, if you could, it's a hard pattern to figure out. And forward facing sonar does make it much easier to figure that pattern out. All it did was take an existing thing and make it better. They just got, got more fishing at it. You look at the fork tournament, Trey McKinney was fishing fish that were about to go on the bed in eight foot of water, four to eight foot of water with a jerk bait and a Senko. And guess what? We've been doing that on forks since the freaking eighties, throwing a damn back in the day, an old rattling rogue. We were throwing around the timber in six foot of water, eight foot of water, that same exact thing. There's a big spider right here. One second. I missed, but he ran away. So we're good. Um, now if he crawls on my toe later, you might hear me squeal. So, point is the forward facing sonar deal is not changing the patterns it's not like you guys want to talk about the classic and it's forward facing sonar one um guess what he was throwing a jerk bait around brush piles on grand lake it's exactly what they've always done at grand lake folks he's just more efficient at it because of forward facing sonar so i'm over the forward facing sonar is it good or bad fishing it's good it's making guys better fishermen which is more fun to watch the patterns aren't changing the, the, the bass aren't changing because of the bass aren't changing their behavior. I've heard that speculation. Not happening. It's just making guys better at what they already know how to do. It's all it's doing, and they are using it to its maximum potential. And if you think that it automatically makes you a better fisherman, go spend your $5,000 and then tell me how easy it is for four-facing sonar to make you better because it is not that easy. I assure you, I have tried. It's not. All right. That being said... Let's move on to the next topic. Uh, there is one thing that's happened, and this happens in the bass fishing industry all the time. People manipulate the narrative is what I call it. There's a lot of manipulation in bass fishing, and people manipulate the narrative within the industry all the time. Companies, big time, manipulate the narrative, and that is going on with forward-facing sonar. So let's look at the people that are coming out saying that forward-facing sonar is bad for bass fishing. Let's take a look at it. Matt Heron's been pretty outspoken about forward facing sonar not being good. I know Lee Livesey does not like forward facing sonar and has said such. He does not like trying to fish with forward facing sonar. Um, Mark Menendez has said forward facing sonar is bad for the future of fishing. Maybe my favorite bass fisherman of all time, Hank Parker, has come out and said, he thinks forward facing sonar. He made this big long speech about how, well, you know, with this old North Carolina accent that I can't do, so this is going to be Texified, Hank Parker. But, you know, I didn't want to say anything negative for a while. I just wanted to sit back and observe. But after observing for a while, I've decided that, in my opinion, this is bad for the future of our sport. That's funny. Hank Parker got cut from Berkeley, which was sacrilege and wrong by Berkeley. He should have been able to ride it out until he died, you know, for all he's done to build that company at Berkeley. That was ridiculous that they cut him. Um, that was sorry of Berkeley to do that. But, well, pure fishing, not Berkeley, but pure fishing. So Hank Parker lost some major sponsor dollars this year. I've heard a rumor. Don't know how true this is or not, but it all adds up when you look at it. Heard that Hummingbird is incentivizing guys to publicly speak negatively about forward facing sonar and to publicly state that they would like it to be removed from tournament fishing at the top level. Why would Hummingbird do that? Why would they incentivize pay guys to talk bad about forward facing sonar and and Amford to pay guys to, to incentivize guys to say that they want it out of professional tournament fishing. Well, let's look at the situation. When it comes to live sonar, Garmin's number one, Lawrence is second, and Hummingbird does not matter because theirs sucks compared to the other two. Everybody in the industry knows that. Everybody in the industry knows that. What do every one of those guys that I just mentioned have in common? Matt Heron, Mark Menendez, Lee Livesey. Uh, Hank Parker, and there's others that I'm forgetting here, so I'm sorry for only calling out those four, but there's plenty of others. You can go look it up. What do they all have in common? They're all sponsored by Hummingbird. Every one of them sponsored by Hummingbird. So when you look at the guys that are publicly speaking out against live sonar, oh, guess what? I've heard a rumor there's been incentiv incentivized 
payments or something like that along those lines. No idea if it's true or not, but I've heard the rumor that Hummingbird's doing that. And all the guys sponsored, all the guys talking negatively happen to be sponsored by Hummingbird. Imagine that, or most of them anyway. Like, huh, huh, hmm. That type of behind the scenes manipulation that 99% of the public will never know or understand happens all the time in this industry. That is a big part of what's wrong. So what's wrong with the fishing industry? Two things, ego, deception. Fish stories, always been lies. Helicopter lure. You know the story about the helicopter lure? Roland Martin back in the day brings his 20 pound bass up. They're fishing in Mexico. His buddy comes up with his 20 pound bass talking about he caught it on the helicopter lure. Rumor has it, no idea if this is true or not, but rumor has it that fish was found floating dead and they just brought him and showed him on camera because it was good for the show and it sold a lot of helicopter lures, which was one of the biggest garbage lures ever sold in the history of bass fishing. It's always happened in this industry. It's because it's easy to pull off because there is so much mystery to bass fishing. We don't understand what goes on on the water fully. Um, it, it, it's, there's always been a lot of deception in the industry. And that is one thing that I do appreciate about social media and bass fishing these days is there's so much more exposed that there are guys that are doing it the right way. In my, like in what, in my opinion is the right way. I try to myself, I try to be, Super open with the information, super honest about, man, I've even been honest with things I probably shouldn't have been about what's going on in my life with you guys. Like, I tell y'all everything, you know, way more than I probably should. Um, and I've actually gotten in trouble for it at times <laughs> for saying some of the things I've said about my personal life here. So it is what it is. Um, I'm, I'm honest, I guess, to a fault in that way. Um, but there are guys that try to do it the right way. And I want to take that to transition into the Bass Amigo side of things, but well, we're fixing to start this new company. And we told y'all before, we want this to be the most customer involved company. We want you guys to feel like you're part of this company more than any company that has ever come into this industry. We want this to be the people's bass fishing company. You know, it's gonna be Bass Amigos. We're all gonna be buddies in this. It's all gonna be about building a community where guys are just trying to help, help each other catch more and bigger fish. Yeah, we wanna go fish a, a derby on the weekend and compete if we can, if we have the opportunity but not at the expense of being shitty to our fellow man. Sorry for cussing. So, sorry for cussing. If you get that reference, let's go. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be so competitive that we forget what our priorities are. And, and that is what we're commanded to do if you believe what I believe, which is love our fellow man over ourselves. I've always wanted to be that way. I've always strived to be that way. And I will tell you, with all the things that went on in my personal life over the last five years, I have at times gotten further away from that than I should have. I'm trying every day like heck to get right back to that. And um, it's important to me, man, to, to try to care about others more than I care about myself. I try. I know it's hard to do. It's real hard to do, but I try. And I, I fail at it more than I succeed. Um, but we want that to be a staple in this company we want that to be a core value in this company where look man we want to help you guys we want to make the very best bass fishing base that we can make if we can't make something as good or better than what's already offered in the industry we don't want to make it right we're, it's this jig that's coming out best jig on the market it will it probably won't be the biggest selling jig on the market because we don't got a lot of financial firepower behind us here or anything but for the guys that do buy it and get it it's going to be the best fishing jig on the market like it's gonna go through cover better, it's gonna hook them better, it's gonna have great paint jobs where they don't chip, it's gonna have great skirt colors, hand tied, big thick skirts with lots of strands, great weed guard, great hook, it's gonna have all the elements. And there's other jigs that have that, but this is, our head design's a little different. It looks like a head design that I used to use from another company, but if you go check out the details, it is a little different. So um, somebody's asking what company, it's gonna be called uh, Bass Amigos Fishing, the first bait that's going to launch is going to be the jig that I designed. It's coming out here in just a couple weeks. It'll be, be delivered finally here in a few weeks, actually. So it's going to be completed a week from today, supposedly. And then a couple weeks after that, we should be up for sale. So about three weeks or so, you guys will be able to buy them. That's what this company is going to be, though. Just like we involved you guys even in naming, okay, naming the colors for our jig skirts. Uh, we want you guys to be involved. We want, we want your feedback on everything. We want y'all to feel like you're part of it. And we're gonna do that the whole way. So later this week, we've got a big Magnum shaky head that's coming out. We've partnered with Smash Tech. We're gonna take over the big perm worm, the old Magnum crawler from Smash Tech. Oh, big perm. We're taking that over uh, from Heath and gonna, 
we worked out a partnership deal with him where we're going to be making that worm and be mass producing it. So sometimes when big perm ain't available, we're going to try to solve that because we're going to produce it mass. Heath from Smash Tech was doing it by himself in his shop, making them by hand. We're going to make sure the worm has the same quality, which we already have gone through the testing phase on that. It's good to go. It's really good. Um, and we're going to be able to mass produce that at quality. And so that worm should be more readily available to you guys once we hit this summer. And that's when that should be here and ready to go. But this big magnum shaky head that we designed, which is a very unique design on the shaky head, and I'm excited to show you guys that here pretty soon, we're going to let you guys name the shaky head as well. Like you're going to get the, you as the consumer base, you as the followers are going to get to name the baits, name the colors, be involved with feedback. If we need to tweak something on a, on a design and it, we, we agree and it checks out, we, we'll do that. Like you guys are going to be a part of this, part of this, part of this. There you go. Please make a blue cross swirl. I know exactly what color that is on Big Perm. We can do that, Andy Alphabet. We can sure do it. So, let me look up my notes here. With that being said, let's announce the winners. Now, this contest was held on Facebook, and I will be messaging all of these people once the jigs are in. Um, to let them know that they got a package coming to them. But every one of these winners that I'm about to announce is gonna get one of every color of our jigs. So they'll get seven jigs for free for participating in contests and winning. All right, so if you go back and look at the Facebook, we had four different colors. One was a uh, kind of traditional name for it would be black, brown, and amber. Several companies have called that color black, brown, and amber. But one of our followers on Facebook came up with the name Mud Whistle. So Mud Whistle is going to be the winner for that color. That was Justin Hodges won that. The next one was a green and chartreuse and purple color. It's just a great summertime color, a great clear water color for a jig. Um, and because I think because of the purple and the, the chartreuse, kind of yellow purple almost, this was the winner we picked. I love this name, Marty Crawl. Marty Crawl. And we had two winners on that. Two guys picked the same name, Brian Ross and Derek Weidbush. Weidbush? That's a weird last name. It's W-I-E-D-E-B-U-S-C-H. I hope I said that right. So, um, Brian and Derek, we're going to honor both y'all in that. Y'all are both going to win your jigs. And then, uh, kind of an Okeechobee type color, uh, green pumpkin with blue flake. Winner of that name was Money Gill, and that winner was Brandon Crocker. And then my personal favorite, and the reason we started with the song we did, uh, Bill Wheelis for our black and blue jig wanted to name it uh, Blue on Black for that Kenny Wayne Shepherd song. Now, what Bill Wheelis did not know, and only a very few people on earth know this, is I have called my black and blue jig Kenny Wayne for years because of the song Blue on Black and being a black and blue jig. I've, I've nicknamed my black and blue jig Kenny Wayne for years. So instead of naming it blue on black like Bill Wheelis, we're going to go ahead and make him the winner. He's going to win the jigs. We're going to call the black and blue jig Kenny Wayne, of course. Kenny Wayne is going to be the name for the black and blue jig. There's also my favorite overall year-round green-brown type color that you guys have heard me talk about for years. We're going to call that one B-Law Crawl. Uh, we've got a Fort Crawl. Now, we've got one other name, and I don't remember the last name of the last one. But, so we got seven colors coming out. But those guys were the winners. We're going to message those guys. Bill Willis is here. He's excited. <laughs> yep, Kenny, Bill Willis, you win for Kenny Wayne. So you kind of won, but you still get the jigs. Either way, it's a win. Hey, a win's a win. A win's a win. I'm just saying, win's a win. And now, later this week, we're going to put the shaky head up, and you guys will get to uh, tell us what you think of the shaky head names, and then we'll name a shaky head, okay? So we'll move on from there. I can't wait to show you guys that design. I'm really excited about it. It's very unique, and I think it's really, really super cool. So excited to show you guys that. All right. Make sure... Yep, okay, we can move on from that. That's it for the Bass Amigos news tonight. Let's talk Lake Fork bass fishing. What's going on? Justin Hodges, one of our other winners, is in here. Man, they're spawning, dude. They're spawning good. Like, I know they've been spawning since early March, but the March spawn kind of got lingered out and delayed and slowed down because we had a lot of cold nights. 
uh, in the second half of March. And now they're starting to spawn pretty good. It's not easy to see them because we've had high water and some dirty water in a lot of the lake. But you get in the right areas and there's a lot of fish up. I saw a lot of females today, man. We actually had a, one, maybe the biggest heartbreak I've had in many years um, on a fish today. She was extremely big, extremely big. And that's coming from a guy that's seen, you know, I've been fortunate to see quite a few double digits in the boat over the years. And uh, this was one of the biggest ones. I mean, it was really big. You know, you can't weigh them in the water. But fish for this fish, finally bit, hooked her. She made a couple runs, held up good, got out in front of the boat away from it a little bit and just took off like somebody hit a cattle prod on her rear end and broke us off. And uh, it just is what it is, man. I mean, fish that strong, that big, they're, it's amazing the power they have in them. I don't know how big that fish was. It was for sure over 10. Might have might been 13, maybe. I don't know. I mean, like, see, all I know is when she came out with her head up shaking, she was so fat and swole up, she looked like one of them big 13-pounders. Now, was she long enough to be 13? I don't know. I'd, I'd have had to get her in the net and in the boat to find that out. But uh, somebody just commented, I'd have cried. Well, I didn't cry, but I did go. Unfortunately for my customers, I went into silent mode for about two hours. <laughs> I, was, I was heartbroken. And, uh, and I'll be thinking about that fish for a long time. I'll be thinking about that fish for a long time. I, I know better. I know this won't happen. But my fingers are crossed that she'll be there tomorrow. But I know how those real big ones are, especially once you hook them for that long and they jump and run and break off and all that. She ain't going to be there tomorrow. She ain't going to be there tomorrow. She's going to finish laying her eggs tonight probably and be gone or she just won't lay them at all and she'll move off. Um, since some big giant ones do that. They never lay them, so... The male, the male was a five pounder. We caught him twice. He was a five pounder. Um, big male, big male. <laughs> had a five pound male this year, had a six pound male. Seen a lot of big fish up this year. So point is for Lake Fork Fishing Report, now that my side's my, done feeling sorry for myself, move on. A lot of fish spawning right now. Post spawn fish starting to show up, fry garter starting to show up. Man, for me, it's been, it's gotten where it's hard to catch them, real hard to catch them if you're not looking at them up shallow. I, and it's probably just me. I know there's guys going along catching them on a frog. I know there's guys catching them on whatever, weightless plastic, swim jig. I mean, the lake's set up perfect right now for a swim jig, a frog, and a sinko. Like, it, it's flooded cover everywhere you look, fish on the bank everywhere you look. Um, it's set up perfect for that frog and swim jig deal. And a Cinco if you want to go finesse, you know, we want to slow down. But, man, I'm just having a hard time getting bites other than the bed fish. Now, the main lake deal, I would love to tell you, but I haven't been out there. There's too many fish spawning for me to get out on the main lake. I just, I like the sight fishing deal so much, and I, that's where I'm comfortable at. And so that's what we spend our days doing right now. I don't know what's going on. Are we talking fork? Yeah, we're talking fork. Uh, this has all been on Lake Fork. Uh, I've only been, I haven't been to any other lakes lately. Um, but I think some of that shallow point shell bed deal probably has to be going down at this point. There's got to be some of it. There's been some signs of back of pocket, mid pocket, shad spawn on bank grass. I've seen that. Once in a while, it's not anything like, oh, my God, chatter spawning, we're going to catch them. I haven't run into any of that. I know that I've heard a couple guys tell me they have. They've run into some sure enough shad spawn action. I haven't run into – I've seen some shad spawn in a little in a little flicker, just a little bit, but not in like – dude, a real shad spawn is pretty mind-blowing. And especially when bass are feeding on it, it's really mind-blowing. It, it's probably the coolest thing that happens in bass fishing when you get on a – real good shad spawn and the bass are there chewing them and it's literally the faster you can throw back in there the faster you catch another one it, it's insane it's like sharks in a feeding frenzy is what they act like it's just craziness so um yeah i have not run into that but i've heard some guys that have seen it just a little bit here and there though it's not like 
made every morning I'm on that shad spawn deal. That's not what I'm hearing from guys. So I think, you know, the water temps are still in the 60s, 67-ish today. Stayed that way all day with the cloud cover. Um, that shad spawn deal really seems to get going better when the water gets into the 70s. When the water gets up 71, 72 in the morning time temps, that's when the shad spawn deal really tends to get better. And I've seen the shad spawn go as late as into June, so it's not out of the realm possibility that the shad spawn is going to get better and better uh, once we get some more sunshine and warm that water up a little more. So, and now that deal, if you can find that when it goes down, you're going to catch them. I like yellow magic topwater popper. I like uh, little swim baits in that. That's my main two baits for that. When it's a grass related thread fin shad spawn. The clay points and the gizzard shad, whole different deal. Big square bills, big walking topwaters. Um, that kind of deal. Uh, if you want a good big walking topwater, I found one last year that's great. Cornerstone Baits, Texas company makes it. It's called the Big Swift. Phenomenal big walking topwater bait. Highly recommend that bait if you're going to go pursue that. And that deal's coming. Like, right? I think there is probably some of that for some guys happening that are out there that are, you know, there's guides on the lake that really pretty much only focus on that this time of year. And I'm sure those guys are catching some good fish doing it. Uh, but that deal is about to get going really good. The same time that thread fin spawn kicks off is when that shallow top water, shallow square bill bite on those main lake shallow shell bed points, that's when that really goes down. Uh, so get you some of those big swifts from Cornerstone because if you want to be out there and go after that pattern, that's a great bait to do it with. And you talk about fun, having schools of five plus pounders busting a spook, wave crashing in, it's crazy, dude. It's chaos. It's a lot of fun. So. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the report right now. Just a lot of fish spawning primarily is my focus. A lot of spawning pockets, a lot of spawning areas is the big deal right now. So, all right, if y'all got any questions, go ahead and ask them. If I think anything else, we'll throw it in there. Dendy says, that sucks. I'm assuming he's talking about that big fish he broke off. So John Dendy fished with me yesterday. So John, where we finished the day, where you caught your last fish, there was another boat back in that corner. So we didn't go back there. She was in that corner. <laughs> so we were like 100 yards from her, bud. <laughs> been a minute since our last party? Yeah, yeah it has been. What's a good spot for a kayak? Oh, good spot for a kayak. Um, maybe where could you launch a kayak? Quail Hollow? Yeah, the north end of Little Caney. But, I mean, there's going to be a lot of boats. A lot of boats in Little Caney always. Um, but, man, probably the best population of fish on the lake over the last five years has lived in that upper half of Little Caney. It really has. So that's, that upper in Little Caney would be a really good spot. You can launch a quail hollow and there's pockets all around you, dude, and you can go to work. Richard C. says, am I a daddy yet? Yeah, you're late to the party. So we talked about that earlier. So uh, we have a scheduled induction coming up here shortly. You know, it could happen any time now, but if not, it'll be here within a couple weeks. Do we have baby names picked out yet? Yeah, we've, we've got a name. So we're having a baby girl. My first girl having a baby girl and uh we got the name all sorted so it came down to a few names that i'd picked and that princess laney in there had picked <laughs> crankbait <laughs> name her crankbait that'd be awesome <laughs> it's not far from that i actually did not originally pick the name that we ended up going with but i didn't argue much her name's gonna be berkeley it's not going to be spelled like Berkeley fishing, and I'm not a huge Berkeley Bates guy. Um, I don't fish a lot of their stuff, but I do think it's cool that my daughter is going to be named, have, have a fishing company name for a name. I got a dog named Skeeter and a daughter named Berkeley. If fishing ain't my life, I don't know what. <laughs> like, it's not just for show here, folks. It's real. <laughs> Yep, 
you boys at Fort got your live scope figured out yet, or was that just a bass match thing? First of all, first of all, <laughs> those guys are really good. <laughs> so they're going to do it better than I can do it. I'm just going to tell you right now. They are better at that than I am. There ain't no doubt. Um, live scope's a weird deal for a guide. Weird deal for a guide, man. It, it is, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, I find it challenging. When I'm out by myself, I use it and I catch fish doing it. I'm rarely out by myself, so I don't get to practice it very much. I almost always have customers. With customers, if we're fishing, like right now, we're not using it. Hell, we're looking at them with our eyes. We're not using live scope right now. Um, but when they do get out off the bank and we're not fishing the flooded cover or the bank or the bed fish, I do use it on guide trips, but it's more like, okay, there's some fish over there not there's one right there throw right in that spot it's so hard to get a customer to hit the cone and then just to do that is really difficult for a customer and a guide then on top of that to have that guy have the awareness and dexterity and be able to coordinate and talk with you about exactly how to work the bait and get the fish to bite while you're looking at it on the screen while i'm controlling the screen like it's a lot man like it's hard to do when we're bed fishing and I'm trying to tell them exactly where to put the bait and exactly how to shake it. Those wires get crossed a lot. So it's like, I just don't find it very efficient. Like, and fortunately for me, we're on a lake that's good enough that I've gotten the good fortune to be able to fish for long enough. I know it pretty well. We can still be productive without using the live scope the way those pros do. Um, and we still catch good fish. So that that's kind of where i'm at with it you know i don't use it very much at all because mostly i'm on guide trips and i don't find it effective on guide trips so yeah we're using that natural live scope right now though we just right there got him he's right there see him 60 dollar bass rod recommendation uzbek is trying to start fishing a lot more careful it's addictive brother welcome to this weird addiction um Hope you get half the enjoyment out of it I have over the years. But $60 bass rod these days, I really don't know, to be honest with you. I would say for that, your best bet would be to go to Academy and whatever they have in that price range that's H2O Express brand, buy that. It's not going to be the best rod, but those Academy brand rods, back I know back in the day when I was buying cheap rods, I, hey, I've been there, dog. Like, don't feel bad. I have been there. I'm fortunate enough now that I've had different rod sponsors over the years, and hell, now I design my own. But uh, I would say the H2O Express line of rods for their bang for buck is as good as it gets. All right, who else has got questions? Y'all pop them in here. We'll answer a couple more before we get off this thing for the evening. And then we, 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 will be, we, 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 we will be back later this week for, it'll be just a short video, uh, and we'll probably do it over on Facebook, but we'll be back later this week for a naming contest for the new Magnum Shaky Head we're coming out with. The Iowa boys are on fork trying to find them big girls. Hey, get to that clean water, man. If you find that dirty water, get away from it. There's plenty of clean water in the lake to go look at. That is a tip for fork right now, is avoiding the dirty water. Um, if you can. If you can. I mean, there's, there is enough clean water right now. You can't avoid it. Where can we get your new baits? There will be a... They're, they're not able to view just yet. There will be a website within the next couple weeks when we get these baits up for sale... It's going to be BassAmigosFishing.com. Where can you find social media info? for the, Right now, all the info for Bass Amigos is right here. <laughs> right here on the Your Lake Fort Guy Networks. Um, but all that stuff is coming and coming very soon within the next couple weeks. And it'll all be under Bass Amigos Fishing. Berkeley, my daughter Berkeley will be the MC at the Berkeley tournament. I mean, maybe someday. That'd be pretty cool, man. She's going to have to be in a fishing with a name like that, right? And, you know, these days, there's definitely some girls making some headway 
in the bass fishing world. I know I saw uh, the kayak lady, Christine Fisher, saw her out on Fork this year. Um, she seemed super nice. I just spoke to her on the water and uh, just for a brief second when we were in the same area, and she seemed super nice. Michael Bray's gonna need some jigs in Arkansas. You got it, buddy. I will send them to you, my man. You know I will. I know you're a jig fishing fool, Mike Bray. Oh, I just remember what our other color was. So our other color was my special jig color, like a little secret deal. But we named it Neon Dion. Now, the reason we named it that was, A, it's got some neon colors. It's black with some neon orange. And that's kind of been a secret hush hush deal for years. If you watch Channel Love, you've probably seen uh, probably seen me say that over the years if you watch every little detail on the channels but I had a customer named Dion several years back literally his first like I pulled up to the guarantee tree some of y'all know the guarantee tree is I've got a tree in the winter time when the water's low it's the guarantee tree you throw over there you catch a big one it happens every day literally every day I go to it so it's a really cool thing people think that I'm the best fishing guy in the world Really, it's just, well, I only got one of them. There's just one guaranteed tree. I'm not that great. <laughs> but I have a guaranteed tree when the situation is right. So we pulled up that tree first thing in the morning. He casts it over there, makes a good cast, brings a jig through there, catches like a seven or eight pounder. It's his personal best on the first cast of the morning. Pretty good way to start the trip. So we're excited. We're slapping hands. He's excited. His name was Dion. He caught it on that jig with that neon color in it. And I told him back then, I go, dude, we got to name this jig Neon Dion. So that jig is going to be named Neon Dion. So the full color lineup will be the colors that we named off earlier, Mud Whistle, Marty Crawl, um, Money Gill, and Kenny Wayne. That's four colors. Then we'll have B-Law Crawl, Fork Crawl, and Neon Dion. That will be the seven color names of our jigs. Michael Bray knows that tree. So Michael Bray can vouch for this. He's in the chat. Michael Bray's in the chat. You can read his comments. Had Michael Bray out one morning. We're fishing. It's been slow. It's cold, real cold wintertime fishing. Don't want a jig. We've only caught like one fish that morning. We go eat lunch. We come out from lunch. I look at Michael Bray. I go, All right, dude, you ready to go to the guarantee tree? He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I got a tree. You're going to catch him. Up. I go, you ready to go guarantee tree? He goes, yeah, hell yeah. What are we waiting on? Why have we waited this long? So we go to the guarantee tree, and he throws in there and catches like a six-pounder. I, I think it was like a six-pounder. And then proceeded to catch like four fish off of it between him and me. We caught like four fish off that guarantee tree that day, I think. But it's the guarantee tree thing is a real deal. In fact, when Bass Pro Tour was here a few years ago, Ryan Salzman had been watching the content I'd been making catching fish on a jig. And I mentioned the guarantee tree in a couple of those videos. And Ryan Salzman is literally on Bass Pro Tour Live fishing this tree, catching fish off of it, calling it the guarantee tree because he recognized the tree from my videos so that's the guarantee tree so the guarantee tree thing the guarantee tree is a real thing on for but i only got one of them <clears throat> the adventures of general hooligan ask where's that tree uh it's in the water that's where it is <laughs> there you go michael bray confirms that definitely happened that's exactly how it went down <laughs> absolutely yeah it's a, it's a cool deal man it's a cool deal just has nothing to do with me being great at fishing i've just been or even good at fishing i've just been lucky enough to figure out a way to stay on the water for a living where i get to fish so many days a year on one of maybe probably the best all-time trophy bass lake the goat lake um you spend enough time on that body of water, you're going to see some cool stuff and figure some cool stuff out. I, I know you were kidding about where's the tree. So was I. It's in the water. It's okay. You kid. I kid. We kid. It's all good, man. Guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, man. Appreciate y'all joining us for the return of the Year Lake Fort Guide live streams. Hope we didn't disappoint too many people by talking about all the mess. Uh, let's guess the way to the new baby. Love that. Go ahead. Fire off some guesses in the comments on the way to the new baby, uh, especially if you're watching this after, because those comments will stay for a while. Um, got people, congrats for, congrats, dad. Thank you, dude. It's, uh, you know, I'm a little old to be having a new kid. I'm 41 now. I just turned 41 in March. But, uh, you know, it wasn't an accident 
or anything like that. It was talked about and thought through before we got pregnant. And my favorite thing to do on this planet is be a dad. And that, I know that's cheesy, corny, whatever. But it's real, dude. Like, the only thing that I'll sacrifice fishing for, <laughs> the only thing that I'll not make content for is when I'm busy with my kids. You know, and that's what's been going on here lately with, you know, pregnant wife, nine months pregnant, all this baseball stuff with my kid. Um, that's what's kept me from making the content for the most part. So it's, uh, you know, I love being a dad. And when me and Lainey talked about it, that was my thought process was, yeah, I'm old to be becoming a dad again, but I don't mind doing it all over again. It would be the honor of my life. Like, I just, I don't know what to say, man. I'm going to get choked up. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I love being dead. So, I'm excited. I get to do it all again. And I got to go because I am getting choked up. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next time right here. Cheers, y'all, on your Lake Fort Guide.